We're seeing a lot of great testimony. You know, people telling their stories of healing from leukemia or stage four cancer, or tumors disappearing, or Parkinson's disease going into remission. We're seeing the evidence in testimony. And I think evidence is the loudest voice right now. How you think and how you act and how you feel is your personality. And your personality has a very direct relationship with your personal reality. Which means if you want to change your personal reality, if you want to change something about your life, you got to change. And so the process of change then becomes the fundamental process of going from some person that's familiar and known to you and stepping out and beginning to make different choices and to begin think different, to thinking differently and begin to behave differently and speak differently and feel differently. And, and if you start thinking, acting and feeling differently, our research shows without a doubt you're going to have dramatic changes in your biology and if you do it enough times you're going to become someone else and the disease then all of a sudden exists in the old personality and mm, not in the wow. new personality and then you ask wow. the person where's the cancer where's the rheumatoid arthritis where's the immune mediated condition it's in the old person i'm not that person any longer and how many times do we have to forget until we start remembering and keep remembering and stop forgetting that's the process of change so then you took, put a person in a meditation and they hear that voice, they hear that chatter, they, they want to get up and take a, go to the bathroom, they want to check their cell phone, they want to feel angry. And instead of getting up and saying, I can't meditate, you see, that's, they're coming to the end of the known. So they want to go back to what's known, right? Mm. If, you ask, if you teach the person what to do and you show them that on the other side of that is freedom, on the other side yeah. of that is joy. It, you got to become so conscious and it takes a lot of awareness. It takes a lot of energy to sit with yourself long enough to disentangle from those programs. Now, we now know that it's a formula that if you follow a formula, you will actually start pruning circuitry. You'll start the condition, stop the conditioning process and move the body out of the past and it starts liberating energy. And that's, that's energy to heal with. That's energy mm -hmm. to create a new life. That's energy to digest again. That's a, the body's no longer living in survival, or living in emergency. And the majority of people's emotions then tend to be derived from the hormones of stress. And, yeah. and so, so that we started realizing that the arousal of the stress hormones, that the rush of uh, the chemistry is actually tapping the body's resources and the stronger the emotions we feel towards any problem or person in our life, the more we pay attention to them. And if where you place your attention is where you place your energy, mm. then you're giving your power away to that person or problem. And if a person can learn to sit in the fire mm. and say, it's not my boss, it's not my ex, it's not my job, it's not the pandemic, it's me. That this emotion isn't serving me because this emotion is the exact emotion that's pushing the genetic buttons that's creating disease. Okay, if I can keep practicing lowering the volume to that emotion, I'll keep taking my attention off that person or problem. And mm -hmm. in a sense, the body starts moving back where? Into the present moment. It starts getting relaxed in the, in the unknown. A lot of people, a lot of people don't know what to do. Yes. When they have that thought, they, they have no formula that's scientific and, and practical that if they can practice enough times, if nerve cells that fire together, wire together, then nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. And mm -hmm. if you stick with it, and I, we can tell you this, that sooner or later, that thought is going to start to have a weakening effect on your mind until ultimately it's no longer going to be there because you no longer paid attention to it, no longer accepted it, no longer believed it, no longer surrendered to it. And most people, when they get to this point, Mark, they think I'm doing my meditation wrong. And I always tell them, no, 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 no. You're actually doing it right. That's, that's what I want you to see. That's staying in the way between you and your happiness. On the other side of that, is a whole new area that you get to wire your brain any way you choose. So then there's an unlearning process before the relearning process. There's a breaking a habit of the old self and a reinvention of a new self. You gotta prune synaptic connections and then you gotta practice sprouting new ones. You gotta unfire and unwire. You gotta refire and rewire. You gotta deprogram and reprogram. You gotta lose your mind and create a new one. And you have to unmemorize emotions that keep you connected to the same familiar past and then recondition the body to a new mind and to a new emotion. Yeah, we had a woman on the stage in our event just recently, 78-year-old woman, very serious car accident, in a wheelchair, couldn't walk, couldn't speak, made up her mind, like, this is it, I am here to change. It wasn't like 50% in, I hope this works. She was like, I made up my mind, and the decision 
became a, a moment in time that she never forgot. She will say to you, I know the moment I made up my mind. I know the moment I decided to change. That, think about it, that is the moment she moved her brain and body from the past present reality into a future present reality. What do I mean by that? People wake up in the morning and they, they don't feel anything and all of a sudden their brain is a record of the past. They start thinking about all their problems and those problems are memories of certain people and objects and things at certain times and places. So the moment they start remembering their problems, they're thinking in the past. Well, every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it. So they start feeling unhappy, they start feeling discouraged, they start feeling victimized. Now their body's in the past. And if how you think and how you feel creates your state of being, that person's starting their day with their entire state of being in the past. So if they're living in the familiar past and they're in the known, they're gonna create the predictable future. So they're gonna run through a series of routine behaviors in their day and they're gonna wanna know the feeling of every experience in their life. Well, if you can predict the feeling of every experience in your life, that's more of the known. So now, the person who's now living in that future known reality, how are they going to change? Well, the moment you make a decision and you come out of your resting state, and you begin to say this, I don't care what's going on in my life, environment. I don't care what people think, environment. I don't care how I feel, body. I don't care how long it takes time. I'm gonna do this. And the hair on the back of your neck stands up. That's a new electrochemical signal to the body. This is the body saying he's serious this time. It's like jumping on a horse and wrapping your legs around and giving it a kick. The body's like, ooh, we're gonna ride now. It's no longer, oh geez, I think I'm gonna to change tomorrow. This is, a, this is a strong signal. And that becomes a long-term memory. That moment defines the person. So then the stronger the emotion, if the, if the emotion of inspiration is greater than the emotion of suffering from the past experience, the stronger the emotion they feel, the more they pay attention to the picture in their mind. We could say they're remembering their future and they're beginning to brand that circuitry in their brain and send a new emotional signature to their body. And in a sense, they're creating a coherent, clear intention with an elevated, coherent, hard emotion. And now they're broadcasting a whole new signature and that's dropping a big stone in a very placid lake and here come the waves. That's moving right out into reality. The person is beginning to change their energy and nobody, nobody changes until they change their energy. And when they change their energy, they change their life. We're seeing great changes uh, in the measurements that we've done, brain scans, HRV measurements, epigenetic changes, immune regulation, telomere lengths. We're seeing great changes in the biology of people's brains and bodies. And uh, the evidence it shows us that it's actually possible to do it. And at the same time, we're seeing a lot of great testimony. You know, people telling their stories of healing from leukemia or stage four cancer, or tumors disappearing, or Parkinson's disease going to remission. We're seeing the evidence and testimony. And I think evidence is the loudest voice right now.